Hey, welcome back, everybody. My first guest tonight is in one of the most watched Senate races of the year, running against Lindsey Graham in my home state of South Carolina. Please welcome to a late show, Jamie Harrison. Thanks so much for hey, being here. Steven. Nice to see you again. Oh, it's good seeing you. Thank you for having me on. How's everything back in the Palmetto State? Well, everything's good. It's busy. Uh, you know, the lights at the end, end of the tunnel, November 3rd, is when the big day takes place. Six so uh, we're excited. Six days. How's early voting going in South Carolina? Oh, amazing. We're blowing it out here, Stephen. Over a million people today have voted uh, here in South Carolina. And that's just, that's a new record. We doubled what it was in 2016. Wow. Now, I, I, I have, I have, uh, followed your run against Lindsay since before you were running against Lindsay, because the word was you were going to run against Lindsay. And I don't think I'm the only one who went, well, that's great. It's a bit of a long shot. Uh, congratulations already for how you've proven the possibility of this. Now you just have to push over the line, run through the tape. Why do you think this is different? Why do you think now it's a different South Carolina or, or it's the same South Carolina, but it's a different situation for someone running against Graham. Well, Stephen, I think partly because Lindsey Graham's different. You know, it's almost watching him is like watching a live version of Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Who knows who this guy is? You know, the Lindsey Graham 1.0 was someone that we used to like and respect. And you thought at the end of the day, he could do what was in the best interest of the people of South Carolina. This new guy is only focused on himself. He's only focused on his own political power and political relevance. And the folks in South Carolina are hungry for somebody that's gonna work on behalf of them and their families and their communities. And we are building up a campaign here in South Carolina like we haven't seen in a very long time. And it's a campaign built on hope, making sure that the American dream is alive and well for so many. It, you know, I've lived the American dream. I, I grew up in a mobile home, son of a teen mom, raised by grandparents with a fourth grade and eighth grade education. And I was able to get out of that situation to now run for the U.S. Senate. I mean, that only happens in this great nation. And, you know, and that's what this campaign's all about. That's why we get volunteers coming out the woodworks. Uh, and, and if folks want to volunteer, go to jamieharrison.com. We'd love to have you as we push through. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nicely slid in there, future senator. Now, um, uh, I, you say that... Um, you know, you, you want to talk to people about hope and you want to show people there is hope. Well, you know, as well as I, the great motto of the great state of South Carolina, Doom Sparrow, Sparrow, while I breathe, I hope. What does that mean to you personally? And what do you think it has to do now with what's going on with the American people? Well, you know, Stephen, that motto might as well have been the theme of my life um, because it was hope that really got me through all of the barriers and things that I faced. But, you know, as I go around the state of South Carolina and I talk to uh, parents and I uh, chat with children, you know, that little flank, flicker of, of hope that I had in my eyes, I don't see in the eyes of the kids here in South Carolina. When I talk to their parents, the parents don't say that their kids are going to be better off than they were. And that's what we fundamentally have to change. We live in a state, Stephen, where 38% of rural communities don't have access to broadband, where uh, four of our rural hospitals have, have closed over the past few years. 250,000 people don't have health care. And all of that happened under Lindsey Graham's watch. And that is what we have to change. Uh, and that's what I'm fighting for each and every day, to make life better for those folks. Um I want to get back to Lindsay for just one second, and, and that is, he said multiple times that if somebody was nominated for the Supreme Court in the final year of Donald Trump's first term, he wouldn't be in favor of um, confirming that person. And he's, he's thrown up a lot of gorilla dust to try to, you know, make people forget that he said that, but he broke a promise to the American people. He said he gave his word what do you think that means to the people of South Carolina for someone to not have enough honor to keep a word that is on tape? Well, listen, the way that I grew up, my grandfather always used to tell me, he said, Jamie, a man is only as good as his word. And so in essence, you know, Lindsey Graham's word isn't meant or worth much of anything, Stephen. Uh, and I think the greatest travesty that you can do as a public servant 
is to the lie to the people that you represent. And that's what Lindsey has done. And this isn't the first time. He, he's lied about you know term limits. He, he, when he first got there, he was one of those folks with a contract with America. And he said, I'll stay there for no longer than 12, 12 years. Well, it's 25 years now, and he's running for yet another six. So this man just doesn't keep his word because all he concerns himself with is power. And that's why. Folks in South Carolina are about to give him a one-way ticket back to Seneca, South Carolina, or Mar-a-Lago, or wherever he wants to go. But he's leaving Washington, D.C. Well, you can help him keep his word and, and, and limit his term on Tuesday. <laughs> exactly right. He should thank you for that. Now, um, you called your, your campaign a movement for a new South. Um, I love the South. What do, you, what do you think the future of the South is? I think the future of the South is bright. I think the future of South Carolina is bright. I think South Carolina's better days are ahead of her and not behind her. I think Lindsey Graham is a relic of the old South. And, you know, what I mean by this, Stephen, is that I believe a new South is bold, it is inclusive, it's diverse. It's a place where all of uh, our folks should have their voices appreciated, valued, and heard. You know, this is a seat. The one that I'm vying for was a seat of John C. Calhoun. It was a seat of Strom Thurmond. It was a seat of Pitchfork Ben Tillman, who would go to the floor of the U.S. Senate and talk about the joys of lynching of black folks. And South Carolina on November 3rd has the opportunity of writing a whole brand new history for the South, which we can become the very first state to have two African-American senators serving at the very same time. I think that is the, the new South that we want to see, that we want to hear, that we want to be a part of. A model for the nation. South Carolina has a chance to do it. Jamie Harrison, thank you so much for being here. Good luck on Tuesday. Thank nice you, to see Stephen. you again, my friend. We'll be right it's back. It's good seeing you, too. With Elvis Costello. Thanks, Jamie.